What's up everybody? You're watching Trippy Theories where the topic is psychedelics. My name is AJ and today we're going to be talking about the impact that magic mushrooms may have had on early hominid society. Now there was once a man named Terence McKenna and Terence McKenna had a theory that he termed the stoned ape theory. Now before we go any further just know that the stoned ape theory is not necessarily a theory, it's in recent years been termed a hypothesis. Out of respect for the late Terence McKenna, I will be referring it as the stoned ape theory. But just so you know, it is a hypothesis called the stoned ape theory. The stoned ape theory was a theory that magic mushrooms may have been the catalyst to cause our doubling in brain size, our genetic mutations like hair loss, etc. If you don't know, our brain size more than doubled in size in a very short amount of time, within three million years. So this quadrupled in size in comparison to other primates who had taken 60 million years. We quadrupled that size in less than three million years. So this is a really big jump and People have been trying to figure this out for years on how this happened. Terence McKenna had an idea that magic mushrooms may have been the catalyst for all this. The Stone Ape Theory is an extension of the standard orthodox evolutionary theory. So about 2.6 million years ago, the Pleistocene Ice Age began. And as it froze, the African continent began to dry up. So our arboreal ancestors were probably at the top of this evolutionary chain and as the continent began to dry up we were forced from the trees we were forced from eden into the grassy plains we were a formerly fruititarian species and as we were forced from the trees we had to adapt and become omnivoric pack hunting animals much like the baboons are today. So if you look at baboons today, you'll notice that they're constantly picking up things off the ground. They pick up piles of poop. They smell. They look around. They smell. They put back. They're looking for different food. If our primate ancestors had done this, we would have inevitably encountered mushrooms. So mushrooms would have then been included in the diet. Some things that mushrooms would have done for us would be, at small doses, visual acuity would improve. As visual acuity improves, we would become better hunters, and this would give us this competitive edge against other primates that we were in competition with for protein. A bit larger doses stimulates you, and this increases the likelihood for what they term more frequent instances of successful copulation. In other words, we screw a lot. We would have been an orgiastic style society. And we have cave paintings that sort of allude to this. These paintings indicate that mushrooms may have played a role. People standing together in a group with mushrooms as their heads. And at, in front of them seems to be like the first instance ever of pornography in human history. We would have these mushroom ceremonies every two weeks to every month, and due to the boundary dissolving nature of magic mushrooms, we would have all basically had group sex. There was no male paternity. The children of the tribe were the children of the tribe, not the father, but the tribe's children. We were all functioning more like one unit together. More frequent instances of successful copulation equals more children. More children ensures the survival of our species. Psilocybin also activates the language forming center in the brain. So bit larger doses can induce glossolalia. If you don't know what glossolalia is, it's what the religious types call speaking in tongues. It's these small mouth noises that are absent of definition or meaning. Glossolalia may have had a part to play in the formation of language. 
Now, high doses spark mystical experience, and this could have been what was responsible for the start of religion. Now, I don't know about you, but there's been plenty of times where I've been in this psychedelic hyperspace, and I thought, this has to be what these scriptures were talking about. It has to be. We also have cave paintings depicting magic mushrooms going all the way back to up to 9,000 years ago. People having their heads as magic mushrooms, people holding magic mushrooms. Now, whether or not magic mushrooms are responsible for the formation of art, they at least had huge influence on the art of our ancient ancestors throughout history. Now, there's plenty of experts that have problems with this theory. Some people say, well, there's no rainfall in Africa. Well, that's a weak argument. We're not talking about within the past you know, five to 8,000 years, we're talking about before all this. We even have water erosion on the Sphinx. So people were no doubt in Africa at the time of rainfall. And even though there are no cows in Africa at this time, cows have only been around since 10,500 BC, there is still other animals in this area. Rhinos have been around in Africa for 50 million years. And there are some magic mushrooms that grow out of rhino dung. The Chetuan magic mushroom strain was actually discovered growing in rhino dung in Nepal. The real reason that people have a problem with this theory is they claim Terence McKenna misrepresented his findings from the psychopharmacologist Roland L. Fisher. So the study that Roland L. Fisher did didn't actually scientifically prove that visual acuity improves with the use of small doses of psilocybin mushrooms. Here's what we do know. The Ice Age started about 2.6 million years ago. Now this is around the same time that our brains began to double in size, particularly the most around 800,000 to 200,000 years ago. Something else that we were doing right around this time that I don't hear anybody really talking about. We started doing something different from the rest of the primates. And that was we started cooking meat. New evidence has shown us that Homo erectus have been cooking meat for up to about 2.5 million years ago. So this is my theory off of this theory that I think is more of a hypothesis. It's just an idea that I want to play around with. What if magic mushrooms wasn't the cause of our brain doubling in size directly, but what if magic mushrooms gave our primate ancestors the idea of cooking meat over fire? So our former fruititarian stomachs could not get all the nutrients bioavailable to us through eating meat raw. So what cooking meat did is it kind of did for us what other animals multiple stomachs will do. It breaks down the nutrients and it makes it more bioavailable for us to absorb into our bodies. So I think it's far more likely that magic mushrooms gave Homo erectus the idea to start cooking meat over fire. And this gave us a huge advantage. We started getting all these nutrients that other primates were not able to get through eating other stuff other than cooked meat. We do have evidence that psilocybin mushrooms expands consciousness, literally. We have brain scans that show us that after the use of psilocybin mushrooms, new neurons are forming, new neuronic connections are forming, we have these new pathways of thought that we weren't available to us before, and our brain is more malleable. And while changes of diet don't cause genetic mutation, it won't change the DNA strand, it does cause epigenetic mutation. The past decade, epidemiologists have piled up examples of epigenetic changes induced by diet that can be inherited between generations and have lasting effects on development, metabolism, and health. We know that psilocybin would have inevitably been encountered by early hominid groups. It's very possible 
that the encounter of these psilocybin mushrooms could have been the catalyst for these epigenetic changes that cause these changes in behaviors and practices that inevitably lead to the increase in our brain size. Psilocybin increases the richness and complexity of the social and semiotic environment. The integration of psilocybin into ancient diet, communal practice, and proto-religious activity could help sustain these feedback loops that would help hominids create and respond to this socio-cognitive niche. Anyway, that's my spiel. Now in the last video that we did, What Magic Mushrooms Feel Like, we had a question in the comments by Bougie IRL. It's either Boogie or Bougie IRL. If I got your name wrong, I apologize. Bougie IRL says, What about these magic truffles? Are they similar? I've been thinking of trying these lately because I can't get mushrooms because of where I live. So, the thing about magic truffles is, well, what it is, is it's sclerotia. So, it's these nutrient deposits that are underground in the mycelium network. You have the mycelium network, which is basically, you could think of like the roots of the mushroom. And then the mushrooms grow up out of the ground out of this mycelium network. And little spots in this mycelium network, there's these things called sclerotia. And sclerotia is kind of like belly fat deposits for the mushroom. It could be used later on to reignite the life cycle of the mushroom and grow more mycelium and inevitably more mushrooms. So we call this sclerotia truffles. And the thing about truffles is if you don't live in the Netherlands, then wherever magic mushrooms are outlawed, magic truffles will be outlawed also. If you don't live in the Netherlands, just know that magic mushrooms are probably just as illegal as magic truffles. But if you do live in the Netherlands and you have this legal loophole that you can try magic truffles, they are very similar. It is a psilocybin fungus. It's might have slightly less psilocybin than the fruiting bodies that come up out of the ground. Now there are places, especially in the US, I think 47 states in the US allow for the sale of magic mushroom spores and that's because there's no actual psilocybin in the spores. But there is psilocybin in the fungi just like there's psilocybin in the magic truffles. So magic truffles typically just as illegal as magic mushrooms. I just want to get that out there so you know this for sure. Basically, they do the same thing. You might have to take a little bit more than usual of your typical fruiting body mushrooms that you would take for a psychedelic trip. Anyways, I hope that helped answer your question. If anybody else has any other questions about the topic that we discussed today with magic mushrooms impact on early hominid society, Make sure you comment down below and we'll go over those questions in future videos. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button so we can all talk about more psychedelic content together in the future.